tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Good morning to each and every one of you all. We want to say welcome to the New Beginning Church members and also our online family and friends. The King of Kings is born. Thank you so much for joining us. We pray that you will click the share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. Our scripture this morning will come from Luke 2 verses 8 through 17 from the English Standard Version. That's Luke 2, verses 8 through 17. And it reads, And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that it had been told them concerning this child. Thank God for the reading of his holy word. The Lord Jesus wants all of us who are called by his name to go and tell everyone that we meet that the King of Kings is born. The Savior of the world is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills, and everywhere that Jesus Christ is born. The King is born. The King is born. Ding dong. Ding dong. Can't you hear the bells ringing? The King is born. And we should go tell everyone that we meet that our Savior is here.
Father God, we thank you now, Lord, and we bless your name. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. God, we thank you, Father God, that you kept us all night long, and you're keeping us right now. Lord, we honor you, we praise you, we magnify you. Lord, we thank you for just being good and being God. Now, Lord, we come to ask you again to forgive us for our many sins. Forgive us for messing up, for falling short, for not doing the things that are pleasing in your sight. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us through your word. Bless your word to be real to us. Bless your word, Father God, that your word will be a blessing to us, that we will be blessing, a blessing to so many others. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you ought to go tell it on the mountain. Thank you, Sister Davis, that, that we are... Reminded to go and tell, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. We ought to go tell that Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ is born. Let me call your attention to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1 in the New Testament. The book is Luke. The chapter is 1. Verses are 34 through 38. Luke chapter 1, verses 34 through 38. It is that season again where we acknowledge the birth of Jesus Christ. It's that season where we we highlight his birth again. We ought not wait to this season, but it's just common for us to highlight this birth of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 1 verses 34 through 38. When you found it, you'll discover these words. And then Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore also that one who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month of her who is called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. For with God, nothing will be impossible. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the handmaid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. I want to talk about Lord, let it be. Lord, let it be. As we approach this season, we find ourselves many times in a dilemma. And when we look at life as we see it from day to day, we begin to question how should we celebrate this season? Yes, even in this pandemic, we're wondering, we're looking, we're searching for a way to celebrate Jesus the Christ. And now we know we have to do it safely. 
we've come to the question as to God, how can this thing be? How can it take place during the middle of a pandemic? We wonder, we often wonder, and we are wondering even today, in the midst of this pandemic, we looking to celebrate Christ, to be with family members, to do those things that we normally would do, and we're wondering every day, how can this Christmas be a normal time of celebration? We're at a point in our lives, we're at a point where we need to know from the Lord, how can we celebrate when we have statistics running wild all around us? Over 205,000 cases have been discovered. And, and we have found ourselves in the midst of this pandemic. It has been confirmed in Harris County, uh, Houston alone, that more than 1,044 lives have been lost. We find ourselves in the midst of a problem that we alone cannot solve. We need Jesus. This ought to be a festive time of year, but we find ourselves in the midst of this pandemic trying to make sure not only is our family safe, but many of us are looking at our family members and praying to God that they get well from this virus. We have to come to a point in our lives where we tell the Lord, let it be as you have said in your word. We must be reminded, as Mary had to be reminded, that nothing is impossible with God. When we look at the text, the previous pericope points out some facts in the text. The previous pericope finds us and we find ourselves reading in Luke chapter 1, where Mary is confronted by the angel called Gabriel. And as the angel, Gabriel, comes and makes an announcement to her that you're going to be with child. And you're going to carry this child. And this child's name should be Jesus. Mary finds herself in a great dilemma because she asks the question, how can this thing be? Since I have not known and I do not know a man. Now this word know is not referring to her, her, her intellect. It's not referring to her being one who has known a man, known a man in her mind or seen a man in her mind. This word known, I have not known a man, means that I have not sexually been with a man. And you come talking to me about a baby. Mary, Mary is, is at the point where she's in unbelief. She is not questioning the power of God, but she is questioning how can this thing be when we know that it takes 23 chromosomes from a man, 23 chromosomes from a woman to come together at the proper time, at the period of ovulation, in order for a child to be born. Mary wants to know, Mary wants to know how how can this thing be? Let me tell you, Mary has issues. Not only that, Joseph. Joseph is betrothed to her. Joseph is engaged to her. And Joseph has an issue. Mary goes on and talks to, talks to Joseph. And when she talks to Joseph, it looks like a scene. It sounds like a scene out of Morris' DNA plan. Well, Mari says, Joseph, you are not the father. <laughs> Mari has reconciled and also destroyed many relationships all over this world. But we see in the text that God is the one who first brought 
the DNA test to the scene. Yes, Mari, if you watch him anytime, if you see him anytime, he gets great thrill out of, out of, of making you sit on the edge of your seat just to find out if you are the father. If this was doing modern times, if the Bible was written doing modern times, Joseph and Mary would be on the Mari show. <laughs> and Mari would have to bring the sad news, Joseph, you are not the father. The Bible continues in chapter 1 of Luke, and it says that I understand. The angel is talking to her and says, I understand, but you need to understand that you are a favored one of God. Yes. Let me ask you a question today. Are you favored of God? Are you favored of God in such a way that God will bless you when he won't bless others? God will bless you in a way that he won't bless others. But let me stop here and serve notice on the men and the women. Brothers and sisters, this was the first conception by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And this was the last conception yes. by the Holy Spirit. My brother, she comes to tell you today that she have conceived by way of the Holy Spirit. Don't believe it. My sister, if an angel would come by today in your sanctified imagination and says that you have been impregnated by way of the Holy Spirit, get away from that angel. Get away from that person. For Jesus' conception was the first conception by way of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus' conception was the last conception by way of the Holy Spirit. You see, we need Jesus to be just as much God as God. And we need Jesus to be just as much man as man. He's man because he was born of a physical woman. He's man because he was born of a woman who was a human being. But he's God because he is a part of the triune God himself. Mary is favored. Mary is blessed among women. Mary, a young girl, not, not even in her 20s, theologians believe, have found herself blessed of God. She's going to have a baby. And when she has this baby, his name is going to be Jesus. She's going to have a baby, and it's going to be a miraculous thing happening to her. She's going to have a baby, and when she has a baby, as she carries this baby, rumors are going to get out. Mm. <laughs> I'm so glad it didn't happen in Houston, Texas. I'm so glad it didn't happen in Louisiana. I'm so glad it didn't happen in Mississippi, simply because folk would be sitting on the gallery. Mm. They would be walking down the sidewalk, In Mary's name would become <laughs> the center of attention. Yeah, her name would be posted on the highway. Her, her name would be one that would be talked about every day. Even when Mary showed up at church, the mission sisters of the church would say, there, there she go again. She's sticking to that lie. But the Bible says she was impregnated by way of the Holy Spirit. Not only would Mary... Mary's name be hanging on the highway in the byways. Joseph's name would be hanging on the highways in the byways. Mm -hmm. The brothers would be saying, come on, man. You don't believe that, do you? Mm -hmm. The brothers would be saying, come on, Joseph. Man, I thought you were better than that. The, the men would be saying, brothers, she done done it on you, and she's going to do it again. Bible says that Joseph was in the middle of his sleep. And I want to thank Brother Whitlock and Brother Miles for doing an excellent job of, of setting this message up. Yes. The Bible says that Joseph was in, a, in the middle of his sleep. And he had purpose in his mind to put her away quietly. Yes. Says much about Joseph's character. Says much about who Joseph is. It says much about how Joseph carried himself. He didn't want to embarrass her, so he wanted to put her away quietly. He wanted to dismiss her. He wanted to call the engagement off.
but while he was in the midst of his sleep, the angel of the Lord came to him, spoke to him, and said, don't worry, don't, don't uh, flinch, don't hesitate to take Mary as your wife because this thing that has happened to her is of the Holy Spirit. Joseph got up, he listened to the Lord, and as he listened to the Lord, he took Mary as his wife. And the Bible says that he did not know Mary until after the baby was born. There was no discrepancy there. It was of the Holy Spirit. There was no, no tainingness there. It was of the Holy Spirit. This child's name should be called Jesus. He is the son of the Most High. He is the one who is called Jesus because he will sit on the throne of his father, David. In today's pericope, we find Mary saying to the angel, how in the world do you think this is going to happen? How in the world do you think that, that this is going to take place? Angel Mary says to Gabriel, this, this can't be true because I do not know a man. Mm -hmm. I do not know a man. Mary, Mary was waiting. Mary was waiting for the honeymoon. I say to young people all the time, save the honey for the honeymoon. Mary was waiting for the honeymoon. Mary was waiting to the time where they had, had gotten together in marriage. The angel goes on to answer her and say to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you in verse number 35. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and will, when he comes upon you, the Holy Spirit, he, the Holy Spirit, he will come upon you. And when he comes upon you, the power of the Most High will be present. You see, we have to make sure that we understand that Jesus was born of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the third person of the triune God. We have to understand that Jesus was the one who was born by way of the Holy Spirit. No man was involved. The power of the Most High will overshadow you, the angel says to Mary. And he will be called the Son of God. Jesus is called the Son of God. He is God's only unique Son. He is God's only begotten Son. He says that not only is God doing great things with you, Mary, he has also done great things with Elizabeth. The angel goes on to inform Mary in verse number 36 that now indeed Elizabeth, now indeed Elizabeth, your relative, now indeed Elizabeth has conceived also because God has made it happen. He goes on to say it's been six months now. Elizabeth has, has conceived a child. It's been six months now. Elizabeth has conceived a child. That child shall be called John. Therefore, John is six months older than Jesus. They are cousins. Your, your relative Elizabeth has conceived. She has also conceived. And Elizabeth wasn't supposed to conceive. Elizabeth didn't supposed to conceive because Elizabeth, first of all, was old. It's not a common thing for an old woman to conceive. <laughs> It's not a common thing for a woman who is beyond childbearing age to conceive. The angel says to, to Mary, Mary, this is not only a great thing for you, but your relative Elizabeth has conceived, and you know Elizabeth is old. It didn't use the word aged. It didn't use the word mature. The Bible says Elizabeth is old, and in her old age, she has conceived. I believe the God, the God we serve is able to do anything that he, he says he can do. He can do anything that he wants to do. He, can, he is all-powerful and almighty. Therefore, Elizabeth, in her old age, has conceived. And this is now 
the sixth month of her conception. And Elizabeth not only was old, she was called barren. I say to you today, don't let labels make you who you are. I say to you today, don't let people put labels on you and don't let people limit you based on your age or on your condition. Elizabeth had a condition. Her condition was that she was barren. Her condition was that she would not be able to conceive. Her condition was that all the medical evidence said that Elizabeth will never have a baby. The Bible says that she was called barren. She was called one that would not have a baby. But here she is, even before Mary became pregnant. Here Elizabeth is, has conceived a baby. And it wasn't of the Holy Ghost, but it was put together by the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Elizabeth conceived a baby, and this baby was not in, Elizabeth was not impregnated by the Holy Ghost, but Elizabeth, it was made possible, it was sponsored, it was put together, it was arranged by the Holy Spirit. Because Elizabeth's husband had, had made her impregnated. It goes on to say in verse number 37, for with God, nothing will be impossible. I'm talking to somebody here today. With God, nothing will be impossible. I just want you to know if you don't hear anything, anything I say today, you need to understand with God, nothing will be impossible. It was true in biblical days and it is true today because we serve the same God. God doesn't change. He is immutable. God is omnipresent. He is everywhere at the same time. God is omnipotent. He is all powerful and almighty. God is omniscient. He knows everything. He sees everything. God is sovereign. The God we serve does what he wants to do at the time he chooses to do it. He uses whoever he wants to use the way he wants to do it because he is God. Yes, he's God. He is God. He is God, and he is God all by himself. Let me just stop right here and tell you that there is nothing impossible for God. Amen. What you're praying about, what you're looking for, what you're asking God about, just keep on praying. Pray until something happens. Not only pray until something happens, pray until that thing that you've been praying about happen. I don't know when, I don't know where, but there's nothing impossible for God. Do you hear me today? There is nothing impossible for God. The job you've been looking for, there's nothing impossible for God. Even in a pandemic, yeah. trying to feed your family, there's nothing impossible for God. Even in a pandemic, those things you got to have, not just what you want to have, those things you must have, you need to tell God about it, for nothing is impossible for God. Retirement is not impossible for God. Job advancement, there is nothing impossible for God. Brand new baby, there is nothing impossible for God. New home, there is nothing impossible for God. New vehicle, there is nothing impossible for God. A good education, there is nothing impossible for God. Money for school, there is nothing impossible for God. After the angel tells Mary in verse number 37, there is nothing impossible for God, Mary understands real well. She begins to rejoice. She began to humble herself. I say to you today, Mary is speaking to us. <clears throat> and Mary is letting all of us know that when God blesses you, before God blesses you, 
before you can see God's blessing. After God blesses you, first of all, you need to be humble. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what's going on here in verse number 38. When Mary says, she says, behold, the maid servant of the Lord. She humbles herself. She tells the angel, I'm going to serve the Lord the balance of my days. She tells the angel that I'm not going to take for granted that God has chosen me. What you're going through, the blessings that you have, God has chosen you. And regardless of what you're going through right now, God has chosen you to bless you regardless of how things look. I'm reminded that there's nothing impossible for God. And not only am I reminded that there's nothing impossible for God, I'm reminded that I am the servant of God. Will you be reminded? Will you understand? Will you hope in the Lord? Will you understand that there's nothing impossible? And in the midst of understand, understanding that there's nothing impossible for God, will you also understand that you have to be a servant of the Most High God? Mm -hmm. Serve when you don't want to serve. Serve when you don't feel like serving. Serve when, you, when that's not in your DNA to serve. She says... Blessed. She says, behold, she says that I am a maid servant of the Lord. Yes. Whether you're a man or whether you're a woman, you ought to be a servant unto the Lord. She humbles herself. She, she humbles herself and she, she makes sure that the angel knows and God knows that she is a humble servant. Too many times we have people who, who are servants, that, but they don't serve humbly. Right. We have people that will give you something, and they will tell everybody they gave it to you. <laughs> we have people that will do something for you, and they got to tell everybody what they've done for you. We have to be humble. Yeah. And when we humble, God will bless us. You see, Mary didn't just become humble in the text. She, she didn't just become one who reverenced God in the text. God chose her because she was already humble. That's right. God chose her because she was already a servant. God is already using people who he's going to use in a mighty way. God is looking for somebody who will serve him, who will work for him even when they don't feel like it. God never calls anyone to servants that is not already serving. Come here, David. I'm, a, I'm keeping my daddy's sheep. Come here, David. I want to I wanna use you. Moses, come on. I want to use you. Esther, come on. Esther, I want to use you. Ruth, I want to use you. Yes. Says that, says nothing is possible to God. She humbles herself to the will of the angel. Let me just tell you also, regardless of how strange it seems, God has a way of blessing you. It may be strange to you. You may be down on yourself and think that God can't use you, but God can use you in his kingdom. He can use you in his service. God can use your attitude. He can bless you. You have to humble yourself. <laughs> Then Mary said, Behold, the hand servant, the maid servant of the Lord. And she comes to this conclusion that I highlight today. Let it be. <laughs> Lord, let it be. She tells the angel, Let it be to me according to your word. Mary knows that it's strange. Mary knows that it's, it's, it's theoretically impossible. Mary knows she hadn't seen a man, hadn't been with a man, has not had intercourse with a man. She knows that it takes a man and a woman coming together at the same time, at the right time, in order for a baby to take place. She knows that she has not put herself in that position. She knows that a baby should not be there, but then she comes to the conclusion after she humbles herself, as she listened well, as she obeyed the angel of the Lord, as she hear the word of the Lord, she says, let it be according to your word. Yes, right. Let it be. Lord, let it be 
according to your word. Let me just share with you. If we would walk in God's word, if we would obey God's word, yeah. if we would wrap our hearts and our minds around God's word, then God can and God will bless us. Amen. And he would do great miracles in our presence. I want to tell you today, women, he, he won't give you a baby by way of the Holy Spirit. You need a man. And you need a man that you're married to. Right. You need a man that God has blessed you with, that God has allowed you to get licensed from the state with. You need a man. Somebody that you're married to. You need somebody that, that God can, can bless you with and God can bless you through. And let me just say to those who, uh, who have, have done this thing and have had children, Without a, a, a marriage license, let me say to you, if you get off the horse, get back up and get on. Let me say to you, don't be down on yourself because you, you have had a baby out of wedlock because the fact of the matter is every baby is a blessing from the Lord. Let me just set you free from the religious type this morning and let you know that God is a forgiving God. And just because my sins are different than your sins, God can still bless you too. Yes. So just because you have a baby and you didn't, wasn't married to the man, let me just say to you today, the church can't condemn you. Yes. The church cannot gossip on you and be right with God. We have to get to a point in our lives where the church becomes the church of building people up and not tearing people down. Amen. The angel of the Lord says to Mary that with God, nothing is possible, impossible. Says to Mary, and Mary says to the angel, let it be so, let it be according to your word. Just walk in God's word. Just stay in God's word. Just understand God's word. Just stay with God's word. And God can bless you. And the Bible says in verse number 38, and the angel departed from her. It is an indication that when God commissions the angel, and the angel's job has been done, when the angel's job has been done, the angel leaves. It's an indication to us that when our job is done, it's an indication to us when things are done, when, when our assignment has been taken over, our assignment has been done, walk away. The problem today is women going back getting men whose their assignments are over with. The problem today, women, men are going back getting women whose their assignments are over with. And friends are going back and getting friends where assignments have long been over and you're still trying to push it. You're still trying to force it. You're still trying to make it happen. When it's over, walk away. The text declared. And the angel departed from her. The angel left. And let me tell you, if the angel can leave, <laughs> you ought to be able to walk away share with you today, there's nothing impossible with God. Jesus has made all things possible. This same Jesus that was prophesied to be born of a virgin. This same Jesus that was prophesied to be the impossible, he became possible. This same Jesus that walked these mundane shores gave his life for you and for me. Yes. Yeah, this same Jesus, this same Jesus that we read about, this same Jesus that we discussed during this season, let me just share with you, it's not enough for us to recognize his birth. We also have to recognize his death. Oh, yeah, over 2,000 years ago, this same Jesus was born. He walked these mundane shows for some 33 and a half years. He, he lived among mankind. He did good. He blessed other people. But one Friday, he died on a skull hill called Calvary. Yeah, this same Jesus is no longer a baby. This same Jesus is not, not, no longer Mary's baby's son. He, he grew up to be a man, 33 and a half years old. They killed him. Mean men killed this Jesus over 2,000 years ago on a skull hill called Calvary. 
They killed him, I tell you. They, they hung him high. They, they stretched him wide. They dropped him low. Uh, he died on Calvary between two thieves. Yeah, one man died in sin because he wouldn't confess Christ as his, as his Savior. One man died from sin, but the man in the middle, Jesus the Christ, he died for sin. Yes, right. And because he died for sin, he makes life good for us. <laughs> the, the television, TV will tell you, the internet will tell you that life is good. Let me tell you, if you don't have Jesus, life is not good. Mm -hmm. Let it be so. Let it be so. Let it be so. Lord, let it be so. And those I'm talking to today will get to know Jesus. His death on Calvary's hill. He died on Calvary. The, the earth took an epileptic fit and began to shake and rock. Earthquakes began to happen. It became midnight at midday. He died on Calvary until the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. This same Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. He died, I tell you, the same Jesus that was, to, was prophesied to be born. He died on Calvary until one centurion soldier yelled out, this must be the son of God. He died until the S-U-N refused to shine because the S-O-N was shining brightly. He died on Calvary, I tell you. He died, they took him off the cross, laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because he was going to get up and give it back to Joseph early that third day morning. It was a borrowed tomb because he gave the brand new tomb back to Joseph. This Jesus got up with all power. All power in heaven and earth in his hand. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. The same Jesus that they killed on the cross, that they laid in a bar tomb, rose early that third day morning. He died for you, and he rose for you. The same Jesus that died, that was buried, rose from the dead caught a cloud and got out of here. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. He's making intercessions for us as we confess our sin, as we fall short. We ought to tell God, God, I messed up again. God, forgive me. And Jesus makes intercession for us. As he sits on the right hand of the Father, he reminds God, he says to God, that's one of mine. God, forgive them again. I'm so glad that Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father making intercessions for me because he's not only forgiven me one time, he has not only forgiven me a second time, he's given me trillions and trillions of time because of Jesus. Yes. And one of these days, <laughs> the same Jesus that was born in Bethlehem of Judea, the same Jesus that was laid in a manger, that same Jesus that walked these mundane shores, the same Jesus that opened blinded eyes, raised men from the dead, the same Jesus they killed on Friday, the same Jesus that rose early that third day morning, the same Jesus that's sitting on the right hand of the Father. One of these days, at the top of God, he will crack the sky and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Those of us who remain, will be caught up with him in midair. And the Bible says, we will forever be with the Lord. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. If you don't know this Jesus that I'm talking about, if you have not received him as your personal savior, will you just say, Lord, <laughs> let it be. Will you just say, Lord, let it be, let it be. Lord, receive me, for I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. This is your moment. This is your opportunity to get to know Jesus. When we say the door of the church is open, we mean that, that this is your opportunity to come to know him. When we say that the door of the church is open, we're saying that that if you have not trusted Jesus as your personal Savior, you need to try him. You need to confess the belief in Jesus Christ. You need to believe that he died for you and rose early that third day morning. 
The Bible teaches in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that we need to know the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the fact is, Jesus died for our sins. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. He rose early that third day morning. And he was seen by over 500 men at one time. If you can believe this story and trust that story to get you to heaven, you can be saved right here, right now. The door is open. The invitation is extended. When we say the door of the church is open, this is your opportunity. Say, Jesus, come into my life and make me a new person. I recommend Jesus to you today. If you want to get to know Jesus, just repeat after me and invite him into your life. Let's bow our heads and you repeat after me and talk to God in the name of Jesus. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. Make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And thank God. We believe now that you're born again, that you need to become part of a good Bible teaching church. And the church I recommend is the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the center of attention, where Jesus is the captain of the ship, where Jesus is the main attraction. You can join by inboxing me and let me know you want to be a member of the New Beginning Church. Whether you're in Houston or distant lands, you can join and be a part of this church. As we're meeting remotely now, we're looking forward to that day where we can get together again. And when we do get together, you can have a church home in New Beginning Church. Thank you so much for joining us. And if those of you who are present need prayer, inbox us and let, you, let us know that you do need prayer. We'll be glad to pray with you. And if you've received Christ on this broadcast, we would have the joy of rejoicing with you. Just inbox us and let us know. Thank you so much for joining us. It is often time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time for us to give to the Lord. If you would, uh, it's on your screen. If you would, give to the Lord. We give to the Lord because we love the Lord and we love what God has done for us and through us. And we don't give because of any guilt. We don't give because... We're in church. Whether we're in church or out of church, our gift to the Lord is necessary. You can give in one of three ways. You can give by Cash App. Our cash tag is NBC Souls, dollar sign NBC Souls, dollar sign NBC Souls. Or you can give by Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting.jesus at yahoo.com the idea is as we lift Jesus Jesus will draw all men unto himself the third way of giving is by P.O. Box the P.O. Box is P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas 77459. You, you can send your tithes, you can send your offerings uh, to our guests, you can send your offering in to us. If you want to support this ministry, 
to our members, continue to send your tithes and your offering to one of these three ways you can send them. And God will be pleased with you giving your gifts. Thank you for joining us today. You can join us on Wednesday at 7.20 p.m. for Bible study, Facebook Live, as well as Zoom. Or you can join, and you can join us at 9 a.m. for Sunday school. 9 a.m. for Sunday school every Sunday. And you can join us as you have joined us today at 10.45 a.m. for worship service. We'll be glad to have you a part of our service. Uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, if you, if you have children who are not in Sunday school, they don't have to be members, but they can join the Sunday school class here at the New Beginning Church. They can join in our, our church. Our children are going through Kahoot, and also they're using Zoom uh, for their Sunday school classes. Please inbox me and let me know if you're interested in our church Sunday school. It is in Sunday school as well as uh, Bible study that we learn to dig deep into the word. So we look forward to you being a part of that digging deep. Jesus is coming back and he's looking for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. I want to say Merry Christmas to all of you. This is a good time to celebrate Jesus the Christ. Be careful, be safe. There are, there are a lot of viruses out here and we need to make sure that we won't get engaged in anybody who has the virus and we don't know. We don't know who has the virus. It could be your closest family member or your closest friend. We want to be safe. We want to be wise. And yes, God will protect us. But Jesus says that we shall not tempt God. And Jesus says... In other words, we ought to be wise in our dealing. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. Please continue to be a part. We're looking forward to celebrating the risen Savior with you on next Sunday as well as on Wednesday night. On Wednesday night, we're in the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 3. Please read that chapter before Wednesday night. Read it over and over again so we can be on one accord as we study the Word of God. I'm praying for you, you pray for me, and we pray that God continue to bless you and bless us. Lord, we thank you now, we bless your name, we thank you for all that you do. We pray that you bless us, Father God. We trust that nobody's hands is as strong as your hands. We ask you to bless us and keep us. We ask you, Father God, to shield us. We ask you, Lord, to put a hedge of protection around us. We ask you, God, to bless our sick, bless our bereaved, and bless those who are down. Lift them up, Father God. Encourage them and bless them to be about your business. Lord, we thank you for the promise of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the birth of Jesus. We thank you for the life of Jesus. We thank you for the example that Jesus has given to us. We thank you, Lord, for his death, burial, and his resurrection. And God, we thank you that he's interceding for us. And we thank you that he's coming back again to rescue us from this dark and dismal world. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him, the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us join together by saying, Amen, Amen, and Amen. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. John 12, 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Have a blessed week.